Yes, Aaron, how are we doing? And welcome to the first video of the 24-25 season. The start of the season is slowly approaching. It's been a long time since the last video. The last one was that horrible Derby Day defeat. However, we're back. And we're back with a video discussing this transfer saga surrounding Edison. Because I don't know what's happening. You don't know what's happening. Nobody knows what is going on with this Edison situation. You know, it's been quite a quiet transfer window for City so far. Only the one signing. But Edison has been the constant, you know, his potential move to Saudi Arabia. It's been the whole constant from the start of the window to right now. And it's been like a roller coaster this transfer saga. We've had ups, we've had downs. They've been curveballs. We just don't know what is going on. But in this video, we're going to discuss everything that has happened so far regarding Edison and this whole situation. So look, first things first, Sam Lee, a well-respected journalist who makes a lot of stuff about Manchester City. A few days ago, he made an article speaking about Edison's future and his apparent upset and uh, disheartening reaction from City fans towards Stefan Ortega after the Spurs game and Ortega's massive save against Sun, you know, title within save against Sun. I made a few notes ahead of this video and the summary that I made of what Sam Lee's article was about was basically saying that Edison was affected negatively by all the love and praise Stefan received after his title winning save against Spurs, like I've just said. He was also upset by some City fans claiming that he wouldn't have been able to pull off that save. So the article that's published right in the middle of all this Edison confusion, you know, a couple of weeks prior to that, he'd agreed personal terms with Al Nasser and then it looked like he was going and then they decided not to go ahead with it and sign a different goalkeeper because they didn't want to pay the fee he was asking. So then it looks like it's not happening. Then interest from another Saudi club comes in and so on and so on. But as Sam Lee releases this article, City Extra then posts the quote of that on their Instagram story. So then within hours of that post being uploaded by City Extra, Mrs. Edison, right, Edison's wife, leaves a comment under the post saying, get better information first. This is totally fake news, right? So that was one bombshell. Now, look, obviously, we've got no idea who to believe. You know, we don't know what the truth is. You trust his wife more than you trust a journalist for obvious reasons. But then she could just be leaving that comment just to defend Edison, you know, her husband, because the reaction to that article was quite strong from certain City fans out there. I didn't agree with it. People question his mentality, which, look, I think is absolutely ridiculous. I think you'd have to be a fool to question Edison's mentality. His mentality ahead of many other players, you know. The man doesn't feel pressure. He's ice cold no matter how tense the situation is. He doesn't care. He doesn't stress. He doesn't panic. He's reliable. I think he's a pretty good example of what a captain could be, to be honest with you. I think he's fantastic. Everything that Edison's done that has proved his mentality, the big occasions where he's stepped up, you know, the main occasion obviously being that Champions League final without Edison. We could not have a Champions League final right now. We could have conceded and crumbled under the pressure or lost on penalties or whatever. You know, it was Edison's mentality and his cool head that saved us time after time late on into the game. There's not many goalkeepers out there who would have been able to do that, who would have had the mental strength to keep the calm, keep the cool and perform to the level that he has done. Everything Edison's done for us over the years, I think for anyone to ever question him, his ability, his mentality, his love, his passion, I think they're idiots. Everything that he's done for City over the years he's been here, you know, the incredible football, the unbelievable saves, title after title after title, golden gloves, everything. Because of one fantastic save, and I mean fantastic save, this isn't to discredit Stefan Ortega, but because of one save alone, people are going to go way overboard and use a save by our backup goalkeeper to discredit our first choice. I think it's insane. I don't, I don't understand it. Anyway, look, after all that, after Sam Lee's article, after the criticism and love that he got from City fans because of it, after City Extra's post, after his wife's comment on that post, he releases his own statement on his own Instagram. It was in Brazilian, but I've got the translation here for you. Okay, so his statement says as follows. It is a bit of broken English, but you'll be able to make use of it. Clarifying the note published by The Athletic yesterday refers to whether my alleged dissatisfaction with a colleague, obviously being Stefan Ortega, it is completely false. That supposed reported day was without doubt one of the hardest days of my career when I suffered a fracture that prevented me from playing in the final stretch of the season and consequently re representing my country in Copa America. At the time of my injury, my only thought was to continue in the match defending City in the contest for the conquered title, but the emotion of the match would be greater than reality and fatally I would have no way to continue as I would like because of the damage it caused, completely hindering my field of vision. I stay focused on the preparation of the season and his hands off with EM31, obviously his initials and shirt number. Now look, I've got a lot of respect for Edison. I did anyway, but I do even more now because it would have been very easy to just ignore that, especially if it is looking like he is going to leave. If he is leaving City this season, then it would have been so easy just to ignore the statement, 
ignore the article published, ignore the criticism, just focus on getting his move and going. Because you don't have to deal with it really. But, you know, his passion and his pride, he's released a statement and he's denied, you know, feeling any type of way about it. He was visibly upset when he had to come off. And it was understandable, you know, it was one of the biggest games of the Premier League season. It was, you know, that was the moment where we knew if we win this game, realistically, we will win the Premier League. And he'd been so unlucky that season. He just come off the back of an injury. He was he had a good few injuries last season. It weren't his season, really, was it? And he was obviously upset to have to come off because he didn't choose to come off. He was forced off the pitch. You know, he had a fracture in his eye and he still wanted to play on. And people are questioning his mentality. Don't be daft. But obviously the most exciting bit of it was that final thing he signed off with. I stay focused on the preparation of the season. You know, does that mean he stayed? Not really, no. But it's still a little bit of hope. And look, I quickly want to just touch back on what Edison has done for us. He defend him again like I was just before I read out that statement. Because he has been a massive, massive, massive part in Pep Guardiola's success at City. The way that Edison allows City to play. He's at the heart of everything. Without him, a lot of this could possibly not have happened. You know, it might not have been possible. Seven seasons Edison's been at City. Seven seasons. He's played 332 games for us. He's won 247. Three Golden Gloves. He has been immense for us. One of the best goalkeepers in the world. And if he was to turn around and say, look, I want to go to Saudi Arabia. I want to earn my money. I wouldn't begrudge him. I wouldn't hold it against him. Fair enough. And thank you for your service. And you know what it is? Part of me would understand it. He has won absolutely everything there is to win. Six Premier League titles, two FA Cups, two Community Shields, four League Cups, one Champions League. He's done everything and he's been a massive part in every single one of it. He cost us £35 million. Pounds, £35 million. You can't argue with that. And the fee that we're asking for him is in a region of fifty to £60 million. So after all that, to then make a profit on him, it would be, it'd be great business by a City. But look, obviously, I don't want him to go. I don't care about the profit. I want him to stay in a City shirt. But as I was saying, I do somewhat understand that he's won everything there is to win. He's achieved everything there is. There's nothing new to do other than add more titles that like he's already won to his cabinet, which I hope he does. But yeah, the money that they're offering, £900,000 a week, is near enough impossible to say no to that, isn't it? Now, look, with the journey of his actual move to Saudi Arabia, it started off with Al Nasser. You know, Ronaldo's team, more importantly, I remember the Laporte's team, all right, we saw them to Al Nasser last season. They came in for him. They wanted to pay around £30 million for him, but it was way off. City went 50 to £60 million, like I said. Now, personal terms weren't an issue. They were agreed already with Edison. But it broke down. City didn't agree with the price, and Al Nasser went on to sign a different Brazilian goalkeeper, Bento. So then I was thinking, buzzing, come on, we're safe. You know what I'm saying? Edison's staying. And then, like, three or four days later, Al Itihad, I think it was, came in through. And it's the same again. City are asking for a price, a high price for a goalkeeper. But Saudi ain't shy of money. Hughes can pay the money, all right? He's one of the best in the world. He's still at the peak of his powers. Come on, you can pay up. But I've just got the feeling that we've just got to accept our fate, really, don't we? Whether it's Al Nasser, Al Itihad, Al anybody, if he wants to go to Saudi Arabia, he's going to end up going, should they agree on a price with City? Because... I doubt he's too picky about what team, you know, he wants to join in Saudi Arabia. He's not going over there to win things, let's be honest. He's going over there for the money. And no team will be shy of offering him nearly a million euros a week. So it doesn't really matter. Whoever's going to come in for him, if he wants to go to Saudi Arabia, he's going to end up going. Now, look, he's there with a City preseason team, with Ortega, with Scott Carson, with a few of the other players. But most of the first team aren't at preseason. Maybe things will be a little bit different when we're back in Manchester, when the season starts again. And, you know, with some negotiations with the team, Pep, the board, whoever, we might convince him to stay. We did it with Walker last season. We did it with Bernardo last season. We even somewhat did it with Edison last season. There was Saudi interest from him last season. But, as I said, I feel like you've got to accept the fate. If he wants to go, he's going to end up going because Saudi's like that. They will pay the money. And it is upsetting. They are ruining the game a little bit, you know the best goalkeeper in the world, one of anyway, at the peak of his powers, and he's going to Saudi Arabia. It happened with uh, Aston Villa's Moussa Diaby last week. 25 years old he is, right? Playing for a Champions League club under one of the best managers in the world. Um, he's a starter in that team. There's a project there at Villa that is clear to see. And he's chose to go and you know, choose money, which you can't fault him. The money is irresistible. The numbers are there. It's just mind-boggling, but it is a bit sad what they're doing to the beautiful game, especially when they're taking players from us. It's even more sad. But, yeah, 
Let me know what do you think is going to happen with Edison. Should we accept our fate? Do you think there is a chance that he stays? Obviously, at the end of that statement that I, I'm, you know, I'm going to continue to prepare for the season. There might be a little glimmer of hope, but he didn't say new season at City. He just said new season, didn't he? And it'll still be a new season over there. Now, look, what do Manchester City do if Edison does end up leaving? Because it is a big reality. It's a big chance it happens. And my answer to that is sign nobody. Give Stefan Ortega the number one spot if Edison goes. Now, as much as I've spent 95% of this video defending Edison and singing his praises and saying how much I love him, not one bit of that is to discredit how good Stefan Ortega is. As much as he's our number two, the occasions that he's played in FA Cup Derby Day Finals, Edison has spent a bit of time out injured last season especially. Whenever Stefan's came in, he stepped up. That Newcastle game, he came on, played a blinder. Uh, you know, the one that Oscar Bob scored that winner in. Massive, you know, title-winning game. Um, the Spurs one especially, that save from Hyungmin Son, a few other saves that game. The pressure that was on Stefan Ortega to come on then, especially with how upset Edison was, you know, being forced off the pitch. <sighs> he doesn't feel it. There's something about these Man City keepers, they just don't feel the pressure. And I think it would be really unfair if City was to go into the market if Edison was to leave, after how much Stefan's performed for us and he stepped up no matter the occasion. If we were to go out there and sign a new number one and keep Stefan Ortega as number two, especially after him signing a new contract, I think it'll be bang out of order. But I don't think City will do that anyway. But anyway, look, we're going to leave that one here. There was a lot that was discussed in this video. Let me know your thoughts and everything that has been said in the comments. Do you think Edison's going to stay? Okay. If he does leave, should Ortega be number one? Let us know your thoughts and everything. I'm back. City are back. I'm so excited for this upcoming season. The Euros, look, it was fun while it lasted, but it doesn't compare. It's club over country every single time for me. I'm buzzing for this new season. Pre-season's nearly finished. The next video out after this one will be just a little discussion about pre-season, my thoughts on it, how it went, a few plays to talk about, and then we're getting right into the thick of it. The season's starting. Community Shield, first league game of the season. Chelsea away. I'll be there as well. I'm buzzing for it. Look, I'm going to leave it there. Let us know your thoughts in the video. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel for this upcoming season. We're going to do it. We're going to make it a big one, all right? Thanks for watching. And nice one. Come on, City.